Me, my auntie was when I'm pregnant, I want to walk to the last day. But you see the first three months of my pregnancy. Don't you shake Yeah. What? I was so sick. I was always throwing up like it was it was bad. It was bloody. So that's me that said, I want to work from the very first day of my to the last day. The pregnancy day auntie come here for three months. I will first show you safety. <laughs> I think you're going back home with these shoes. Huh? Yes. It's okay. <laughs> because you're too fine. Let me admire. Okay. Uh. You look good. All right. Yes. You look good. So do you, my really <laughs> love. Before I even see, what do you want to eat? Drink? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Let me get it for you. You, you. you didn't you for me. Fact, I you don't have a choice. I'm bringing what I think you should drink for okay. you. Okay. <laughs> hey, wait. You didn't tell me I was coming to eat. No, you're coming to I have a good time. I would have eaten. <laughs> Yay! In my house. What are we drinking if not malty? Ah, uh, if not malty, nah. that's that's the family mom. drink. That's it. So shame my day. Ah, <laughs> uh, fit farm, fit farm, fit fair, fit farm. How are you doing? My dear, hmm. with a fine dollar. <laughs> dollar will be eight hundred. You are part of the problem. Ah. You are the part of people that want to change all your currency ah. and is giving us. No, Wahala. leave it. Leave your own currency. <laughs> No change now. Is that our legal tender in this country? Mm. <laughs> oh, legal tender will come you. I'm so excited to be having this chat with you because usually yeah, it's, the other, it's the other way around. You're always the one chatting to people. So, <laughs> so I'm so excited to chat to you and just sort of know life from your perspective as yeah, well. From my <laughs> Take it off. The way it's going. Be comfortable. Can you hear the way the conversation <laughs> is going? Let me hear. Life from your perspective mm. and how life has been for you. <sighs> so I'm taking you back to the beginning. A Not way. even like from growing to Mike. Let's mm -hmm. take from Tomike Unilag, Tomike mm. Microbiology, Tomike now in media. <sighs> <laughs> Talk to me a bit happened. about that for you. Uh, a lot has happened. I have grown. I think a few days ago, I was just remembering, okay, we're passing through somewhere. There was one hotel that I stayed in when I was, I think I was in year two or year three, and um, they called me to anchor one show like that. One, was it Miss, Miss something, something, like one of those yeah. small, small pageants, yeah. So obviously I was very excited. I think they offered me 200,000 or so, and it was a big it deal. Was like, you know. how many years? This was like in 20, <laughs> what, like 20, 15, 16, 17 or yeah. so, yeah. So you can just imagine what that money meant to me. And I went to buy clothes and everything for the show. And I did the show, I started the show, like it was so hectic, but you know, I roughed it because it was good money and then the visibility and everything because it was airing live on NT or so at that yeah. point in time. No, by the last day of the show, grand finale, I have not collected one cobble. You did work, you started working, you did not I see said, the money. Uh, you know, you when, when, you are just, money. when you are just starting, <laughs> you know, you are, you are, you are mocking on even the work yeah, and the, the exposure. And you, you won't expect it. that they will just buy you like that. <laughs> uh, last day of the show, we are going to rent out for the class. Like, I have not collected a couple. I've used my money to buy clothes for this show. I've, uh, I've done the show. So I've not called the uncle aside. Hello, I've not received my payments. I was What's happening? After the show, everybody will disappear and go home. Because they lost just for one week. So I, yeah. I said, uh, what do I mean by that? They will send it. I said, I don't understand. At where, what time? Where do I want to find if you don't, if you have not sent it by now? Oh, my, this uncle changed it for me. Oh. Ah, I remember his matter a few days ago. I said, if I remember his house, I will find his house and I will tell you. I will, I'm I will, like, can you see me now? Like, do you know that they did not pay me for that work? This, did did you know, do the you know, final day? The final day, I was not even supposed to do red carpet. This guy now wanted to show me, now got another presenter That's for the red carpet. Know. As per, if you think that because we don't pay you, you will not do it. We say if we have backup. Now, so I know do I'm, now this is my husband of today. Come pick me up from Oriental in tears, weeping, took me back to my hostel that day. <laughs> I can never forget. I yeah. won't pick her from that night. <laughs> I cry. <laughs> because it would be so annoying. You went what? shopping. <laughs> My dear, with how much that I'm not yet seen. So like I just remembered it a few days back when we were passing the hotel and I was just like, ah God, um, I've come a long way. Yeah. Like I'm actually so grateful for like the opportunities that have come my way. Like I'm just grateful for where I am now. Like I did I I didn't really see this back then. Like I don't think I ever saw the bigger picture. Mm. I just knew that I wanted to be in media and everything, but 
I didn't see this. Like this is this is so beautiful, and I'm so grateful. But I mean, you just said that you've always wanted to do media. So why did you even study microbiology in the first My place? Dear, so then they asked first. <laughs> so <laughs> the way this story happened, eh? <laughs> I, you know when you go to school and growing up, you're just like, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be this, so I wanted to be a doctor. My father always said, I believe that you will be, be a, a medical doctor. doctor. So me too, I, now I, old them I tab <laughs> like professional costumes. <laughs> so I tapped into that dream and went to science class. And that's one thing I think they should work on these days. Like, it's not even about what you think you should be. It's what you're actually very good at. Good at, yeah. Should. Like, it's not about, I, I think, I believe this is the beautiful yeah. thing. I want to go there. So I was in science class and then in SS2, I was like, ah, it's like mass communication is looking like a thing, no, ah. So I said, let me switch to mass combat. At that point, when you're almost entering SS3, it's now that like you want to start going to art class. <laughs> so it was too late to switch. So I said, you know what, let me just follow through with yeah. this um, medicine dream. And then I ended up studying microbiology at the end of the day. And ah, what, what even inspired me? to want to be like in media initially was I should say stay on CNN. You know, she oh I should say stay and this is CNN. I so said, me is hey. Christian I'm on four. She just goes I'm saying, Christian I'm like girl. The way they used to say that I'm it in the sweet in the enter. So that was actually my inspiration like I'm I should say stay and this is CNN. <laughs> I say I'm coming to join I'm you. I'm joining you. So that was it. So it wasn't even about the Media aspect, or yeah. it was just that. Um, I should say, say I'm Tommy. <laughs> I'm Tommy. I didn't even is. consider the other aspects of the media, but that far, say you say your name, and this is and CNN. You say where you're working. You know? <laughs> that was the only inspiration that carried me to media. But, yeah. anyways, when I got into you know, like because I was studying microbiology, like I basically could not study mass communication again, so I decided to still pursue that dream. Yeah. and then I started working at the radio station. So, like, I volunteered there all through my stay in Unilag, free of charge, but it gave me everything that I needed to start because it gave me the experience free yeah. of charge. And from there, people from radio station started recommending me for jobs. I got my first TV job from there, my second one from there. And basically, that was how my media journey started. And from that, I kind of transitioned to being more on social media because, like, when I'm going for my jobs, I'll take pictures of my outfits, yeah. post it, and then I realize, ah, these people are using my hair, though. It's like, I'm supposed to be charging for this thing because people will see the outfit. Like, even if I'm eating, right, that's we sit down like this. And I brought up my phone, snap the Maltina, snap the grapes, post it, find a story to write <laughs> about it. So that was how, like, influencing started for me. And yeah. for me, I think it's a major part of my journey right now, like, People don't really watch TV these days, if we are being very honest. So I'm just glad that I transitioned to social media yeah. very early because, like, that's where it's happening right now. So, yeah, that's my journey. Yeah. In a nutshell. Were you doing YouTube as well when you were, you were in Unilab? No, I wasn't doing YouTube then. When did you start YouTube? I started YouTube, um, I think, after I graduated because I was working at Ebony Life TV and then I used to anchor VVIP events. So, like, I used to have, like, passes to like these big Red events and exactly and so like things. my social media followers always knew that if it's like a big wedding say like Dangote's daughter is getting married so Mikhail will be there because of VVIP everything yeah. like TV will cover and because everything like TV is covering me I will now put the stories on my page mm. like carry people along to the wedding make them feel like they were there because I'll get to talk to the bride all of that so I would make videos and it was almost like people were um, getting passes to all these events through me. Oh, so yeah. at some point they were like, this is your long, long Insta. Because my Insta story will now be like dot, dot, dot. Don't look <laughs> your Insta story is like waste beads. Your Insta story I'm and your captions. <laughs> Um, your caption oh is something I'm like, Tommy care what's going my on. Dear. But then At there's times, how you do it that makes they us tell want me to. Say, caption too long, <laughs> too long. <laughs> I will not enter my notepad and I start cutting it down, <laughs> abbreviating all the abbreviations. So, like, people say, I say, ah, this is your dot 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 Insta story. Just convert it to YouTube and then we can always go back and rewatch yeah. these videos. So, that was actually what gave birth to my YouTube channel. And you're doing amazing things on YouTube, YouTube, girl. Thank God, though. So are you. I will, I'm, I'm inspired. Be on this show. You know, it's when I be I, having my show with mouth. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really, really inspired. Thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. Um, and talk to me about having a baby because ha. for me i'm so inspired by you and i'm not even saying this because you're on my couch or because i you know know you personally it's something that i i have told almost everybody i know you were pregnant and you were traveling across the world you were going for jobs out of the country you were going for jobs out of the state you gave birth you were you were carrying your baby with you on the flight 
Like, talk to me about those experiences and how, because I, I know it couldn't have been easy. But on social media, all we see is the glitz and the glamour and the happy side. And you posting to make for us <laughs> on the bed and doing your room tours and all them things. But talk to me about that experience and how it sort of has shaped you as a mom in general. Hmm. I experienced it's not an easy experience, my darling. <laughs> Travel the world before you born. <laughs> That's true. I saw a post on Twitter recently. Oh they my. said, no matter how you want to put it, having a child before you're 25 is an inconvenience. Yes, it is an inconvenience. <laughs> but Omar, which other day, which there was like a place where I was like, ah, Omar, before, before travel a lot. Before, before we, we born. But then I said, ah, where we want to the money? The money we have now is not the money we have. We are now. there, exactly. <laughs> where we won't go then, actually. <laughs> So like as much as like you have to do a lot of things, you have to live in your reality. Like I did not have money to be going on vacation yeah. when I just got out of school. So when did I actually want to be traveling the traveling? But really, um, having a baby, hmm. yo, it's something that is very dicey. Like I got married, I said, okay, you know what? Let's wait for one year, two years. No, I said one year, six, six I said six months. I said ah, one year will not be bad because like, you know when children come, you cannot send them away. Yeah, exactly. They are here to stay, and your life will just yeah, start there's, revolving there's around. something I always say. Like I like kids when now because you can give them back. I know. Let me help you babysit for five hours. Come back I and pick your I baby. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's just something you can't take back. You can never take back that time that you get to spend with your husband, just two of you in the house, like. The way we're living back then is not the way we're living now. No. Like now you wake up, you're, you've not even eaten, you're thinking of what the child will eat and yeah. everything. So we're like, okay, let's wait a bit. Then later on, ah, okay. Oh. But at some point, I now began to think of it. If you wait, 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 you're just postponing the... The inevitable. The inevitable. Your baby will still come and exactly. you still have Exactly. So, so <laughs> you, you just like, just do it now. And at the end of the day, I don't think I want to start having kids at in 35, my 30s. At yeah. my dear. As I am right now, I'm tired. <laughs> In my in old age, age. <laughs> 20, how old is it 27? I'll be how old I am, and I'm this tired. <laughs> when I'm not 30, something, how do I want to do yeah. it if I'm this tired right now? Like, I, I don't think I don't think I will have that strength. Go, come here, go, hey, don't touch Stop me. It. Oh, my days, my goodness, it's a lot. So, like, it's just something that I just thought of. Well, if you're gonna do it, do it now. And then the thing we're doing it now is in this industry whereby if you go, like, just go on one small break. Go. They will help you, they will break you out they of the industry. <laughs> because there's always somebody, of course, another person that's just there, there waiting there at your back. Because we are plenty people. in this exactly. industry. Exactly. So, uh, and this guy <laughs> is actually big enough. So, you have to hold your position well and, and, and utilize it people. well. I'm exactly. here, Exactly. Utilize I'm it here. well. Ensure that you are still relevant. Yeah. And at the end of the day, nobody can, can be famous forever. I mean, Nobody can be number one forever right. at the end of the day. There's always somebody that is working so hard to come come and take your position, yeah. which is okay because you go, you have to retire. Exactly. But while you are still there, you need the money, if we are being very honest. So you need that position to some extent. You need those gigs to some extent. Yeah. So yeah, it was something that was like, okay, as much as I'm pregnant, and you know how I realized that society kind of cancels pregnant women. And I won't really blame them, although I blame them too, because... You know, at times, you never can even dictate how your pregnancy will we'll go. go. You might say, oh, when I'm pregnant, I was like, me, my aunt was, when I'm pregnant, I want to walk to the last day. But you see the first three months of my pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. What? This was me. From morning to night. Looking at what? Looking at the ceiling. Why? Because that's the winter to look at. <laughs> Are you serious? I am not kidding, no. If you enter my house, even you, you will avoid me. <laughs> because when you see somebody pregnant looking like this, what do you want to come and say to the person? You will just respect yourself. You have good money and you, and you go. go. Like, I wasn't having conversations. Like, I was so sick. I was always throwing up. Like, it was, it was bad. It was yeah. bloody. So that's me that said, I want to work from the very first day of my... To the last day. <laughs> the pregnancy and I say, come here for three months. I will first show you shaky. <laughs> and you will calm down. And yo... It was so humbling, like, ah, no, it's, it's, ah. Mm -mm. So at the end of the day, as much as you have your dreams, just have to pray that God should help you bring those dreams to life. Yeah. Because the pregnancy can come at you to say something else. And there's nothing, nothing you can, can do, do about, about it. it. Some people are in hospital all through the nine months of their pregnancy. Yeah. Do you think they don't feel like walking? Do you think they, they don't <laughs> wish that, as in, like, they can Yes, do you think they, they don't wish they can slay and, and look good during it? But yo, at the end of the day, yeah. so like that was that was me. The first three months of my pregnancy it was so horrible, but I'm grateful to God. Like 
I bounced back before the end and thankfully like I could rough it with work like it wasn't so bad it was bad but not as bad as those yeah. first three months so like I was able to just rough it and even when Tumike came thankfully she was a very easy like very sweet baby like it wasn't a cry cry oh, wow. baby exactly she'll be on the flight and nobody will know there's even a baby oh, there like no. so like I was very grateful <laughs> like she was so sweet so like even when she's hungry she was like, She's yeah. not ah, so like at times you won't even know she's hungry. Like she, she really blessed me that but now nah, she don't show me she gets small, small boys. <laughs> she don't know the working age. Now. She didn't do everything. She didn't. And I was really determined to work because like I know how society kind of cancels you. Like yeah. I had people say, Oh, Tomike, ah, you never born now, so you know if you, you know if you work. I say, wait, I'm the time and like the time my hand. You can see me posting, you are still telling me that. Is it not to I, to can, I say send the brief, Jerry, <laughs> let's do the let's do the job. So like people started saying that I was still doing ads, so they were sending it to me abroad and everything yeah. so thankfully it worked out and like even when i put to bed like i had to kind of let people know like i was very intentional about it if i'm being very honest mm. like i had to let you know that because i have a baby now does not mean that like my life is supposed to stop, stop. and that's the thing is always how you how you portray like you have to be very intentional about it like mm. even as much as you are going through hell inside you need to put up i'm not saying fake it for society but you actually have to be strong for society to know that okay she's still on yeah. our list she's still available especially if you're like a woman like knowing what things how are and how exactly us. how hard it is for us so exactly you have to like double up so as, as much as like i was it was stressful for me i had to still do the job like i even started working abroad before i came back yeah, home which I, was yeah. yeah which was very good for me because people saw oh she has baby so she's still working so like the gigs kept coming, coming in. in but if it was the situation where they go oh, oh my baby is i try to avoid that statement yeah. i know this is being very honest with you like <laughs> I know what is going on out there. So I, I had to be so, in, like, you have to be intentional. Yeah. You don't have to force it and show that you're being intentional about it. But deep down, I knew I was being intentional about it. Like, you will not hear me make a statement like, oh, my God, my baby is, my baby is this, my baby is that. Like, it's only, like, my inner circle, yeah. my closer. For example, when you, you call me, you know, I said, oh, my nanny yeah. is not around. I'm trying to sort out. If a client called me, they you will never hear that. that statement of my you nanny, my baby. You deal with it. Nothing around my child, my <laughs> husband, my family will pop up. I assure you, like, <laughs> I did not name Tomike because I wanted to name her after me. Okay, like, so why did you it wasn't even Tomike? about me. It was actually about the name. Like, if that name was there and it wasn't my name, that would have still been her name. Okay. It was, funny enough, You, it kind, it's kind of cringe-worthy knowing that it's my name too, yeah? But <laughs> I just had to ignore that cringe mm. part and just focus on the why. So, like, that name is not common one thing like i really like unique names like i like your name (laughs) exactly (laughs) so i liked how like i would say my name outside and people are like oh that's that's a nice name like what does it mean like and all of that so i mean by the way thank you just (laughs) yes i did (laughs) so like i really like the fact that the name was not everywhere yeah i can be petty like that but the main reason that i actually named her tommy care was like growing up i realized that that name worked for me in places i cannot even explain like the name means god is worthy to be pampered by me right. and i feel like there's no way you pamper god that god will not pamper you and i just realized that growing up like i was always pampered like people see me and they just cherish me and pamper me i'm not saying i'd not chop breakfast right no <laughs> but i'm just saying like i never really had terrible experiences yeah. like that growing up and like people just used to take it upon themselves to pamper me so the only way I could tie back to was God's grace and also as a result of that name speaking for me. So, like, mm-hmm. I know what I enjoyed as a result of that name. I remember my godmother, like, Mrs. Igodalo, like, when I was getting married, you would think that she knew me from somewhere. You would think that I, she, she was owing me something. Me, what is someone that just sent me a DM randomly? And, like, the way she literally pampered me, like, yeah. I cannot even explain it. So, I know the times that that name has spoken for me. So, because of what I enjoyed, I'm like this child has to enjoy this and even aside that before she even came into the world like from time i was like three four months pregnant like yeah. that name was already speaking for her like like people were pampering her yeah, people yeah. we've not even met her but like people were already pampering her so like there was no controversy about it like she was just born to be a yeah, tommy care like she no, she's a pampered baby, and yes, I think that's why that's the main reason why yeah. we gave her that name. And my husband was cool with it, thankfully. So, I know this might be sad for you to talk about, but talk to me about your godmother. Oh my goodness, bit, your relationship with her. Um, you know, you said she reached out to you via Instagram, and you know, you guys sort of just built a relationship from there. 
So just sort of talk to me a bit about the relationship you had with her and how she was just there for you and how, where were you when you got the news? Um, it was actually when I was getting married, she reached out to me, like she had no clue I was getting married and everything, but then that was how the relationship started. So she was like, she had an, she has an event, event planning. planning company and also um, she sells wedding dresses and that um, she would not mind um, doing all of that for my wedding. So. No, she had actually started speaking to me before she said that part. So yeah. it was just like, oh, okay, I think the message was more around like, I just really like you. I just really like how like you've set yourself apart. Something something in that in that life yeah. that I just believe that this is my girl, that kind of thing. So, and I was just like, oh, wow, this because I knew her obviously before and it was very yeah. special for me. And then when she was like, oh, that she, um, so I now told her I was getting married soon. I can't remember. Okay, something happened around that period whereby I got this bride on social media that I literally planned, God literally planned her wedding, like yeah. via my page. Like she got um, free planning, free wedding dress, free this, free that, just from people just offering to gift Help her via gift, my page. Yeah. Okay, yes, she said she tapped into a post whereby um, I was, my engagement post. Right. She was like, she was in church when um, she saw one picture of uh, me saying, or oh, anybody asking God for this kind of blessing or something. And she said, Amen. And I look at it, oh, God has done it. Got She's it. engaged. So that was literally how like our wedding was sorted out via my Instagram page. And so when um, I was sharing it with her, so I was like, ah, that wow, that this is so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And then I now think I now mentioned, even I'm getting married soon. She was like, oh, wow, that am I serious? So she was like, ah, we have to. Um, put something together, together for you and that was how like she handled my wedding decor absolutely free of charge like my wedding dress there was a whole lot that what, she like those she took, things that are the things that cost an arm yes and leg. my dear don't worry somebody <laughs> did that for you for free i know this I have tears in my eyes <laughs> my goodness like it just came like that and it came at a point where like i was already calculating the bills i of knew course. the kind of wedding that i wanted and i knew what it was gonna cost, cost. <laughs> Thankfully, she came through for me at that time, and you know, we built a very beautiful relationship. Like, she was like a mother to me, literally, in every sense of it. And she's just like the sweetest way she's talking. Ah! I know the funny thing, she actually had a, a dream for us whereby, like, we would pick one bride every every year and like we'll gift them the same thing she's yeah. like she she wanted to be like our cinderella bride whereby like we'll keep that thing going but unfortunately yeah she couldn't wait for that so basically you see the beautiful thing about it is this year um there's one of my family members that is actually getting married and um she sent me the iv and somehow somehow like I was just led to just start asking her about the plans what yeah. has she sorted out this one that one and before you knew it like we've literally ticked off a lot of things on our boxes i mean our wedding dress i got someone to make it a yeah. traditional um ashoki i got auntie beams to um, give us the ashoki and yeah. um um bukola imagine by bukola is making it like a hairstylist her hair and makeup like just like that and somehow along the line it just reminded me of how like mama did when he stepped into my life at that point in time when like you know it was it was like a crucial point in yeah. time and it, she just changed the entire thing and made everything easy for me and i was like ah look at it see our cinderella bride at the end of the day yeah. so thankfully we have a cinderella bride this year that's getting married this year like god has literally sorted out like she said she made a video the the night i called her about three hours before i called her she made a video just literally ranting about how our wedding is almost here and she hasn't sorted out almost everything yeah. on our list and that's well, i believe that that's when i now called her and started asking about this okay we'll do this we'll do this we'll sort this person out we'll do that one and just like that it's actually very beautiful so yeah, yeah i'm grateful to god that at least like i know she'll she'll be smiling up there like ah yes, yes. i was in the red and bright <laughs> so i'm actually so excited i'm looking forward to the wedding and yeah. i'm just glad yes where were you when you did you see the news of social media first i didn't even see it off social media who called me Seth? someone called me i was like have you heard or something and ah it was like film trick i remember that it was a sunday i was on the dining when the person called me and then just like that, I just started, you know, reaching out to my people at Elizabeth R. Ha, I'm like, feel like it was true, as in, it was a very horrible, yeah, very horrible experience. Like, just think about it, girl, I don't weak. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I can't remember the last time I ever cried that much. Like, yeah. I cried and cried and cried till I had no more tears. tears. Like, I was so weak and I was just, 
I was just wishing it wasn't true. I was just wishing like I could just you even could sleep and wake up. Hey, and it's like it's a prank. Ah, it's not. No, it was it was it was terrible for weeks. I don't get myself for, but thank God it gets better with time. But the pain never really goes away. Like just knowing, like I will still go back to our chat because I still spoke to her like a few weeks before, and like she was even reaching out, insisting that I should give her hundred thousand to my followers to buy food stuff. Yeah. And I was taking so long doing it, and she kept on reminding me, "Tell me, care we people, we need to, we need to bless your followers that we need to bless." Ah. But I'm glad that we did it before she, because it was just as if she knew that she was going, and she was just trying to lay the yeah. bed and prepare everything to be in order. Yeah, so ah, it was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I like that you know you sort of told us how she was a blessing in your life, and when you see like inspirational stories like that, and you sort of. We see that you were part of that person's story. How does that make you feel? What are the emotions that you go through? It feels very beautiful. <laughs> I don't even think words can actually explain how it feels. Like at times it even feels unreal. Like I am always so happy. Like especially um, stories of women who have been trying to conceive and then they now send pictures of their babies. Oh yeah. gosh, it's, it's always so, so beautiful. Like I'm just always like, God, thank you because it can only be God really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how have you also been able to set boundaries? Because I know like being in the media space and being in entertainment and being married and being young. What do you mean? I feel like even boundaries for me, I feel like it is kind of silence. Like I can't, I can't really say like I set boundaries for myself, but how would I put it? I just I just feel like I have this invisible boundary that if you have sense, you just know you just see that. how you Yeah, like I can't really count how many I think times you have I've that African money. You know why your mom doesn't have to talk and you get I it. Know, especially for like people that are following me and stuff like that. Like you can tell if you if you have sense that I'm a very decent girl. Like it's not it's not about me trying to portray a particular personality. Like I just post about my life myself so you can literally see me through social media and i don't know i've never really had to come and say although there are times when like there's some people ah, i say i'm married say, i say yeah. i'm married are you deaf <laughs> so like it's always it's quite easy i'm just especially for like the general public like people people even people in my industry don't disturb me <laughs> Fair enough. Before we go, I want you to sort of tell us the best advice you've gotten like so far in your career, in life, the advice that sort of resonated with you that you've stuck to and held on to it so tight. Uh, my mother used to say, if you don't stand for um, something. something, you fall for anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that I really held on to. Like, I try as much as possible to stand for something. Like, if you are not careful, you get so distracted by what society is doing or what society is saying. So, yeah. but because I know my stand, like at the end of the day, if it doesn't glorify God, I don't think I want to be there for the for the five seconds of fame or the mm. ten. Like there are some videos you will not find me doing. There mm. are some things you will not find me wearing. Like as much as you might just ah, there's nothing. Well, there's yeah. something there for me. Mm -hmm. What you you will get away with with God. I might not get away with yeah. it. The way you relate with him, the way different. you relate with me. I can do it. You can do it and you just say, don't worry, when you find your way back to me. But I can do it mm -hmm. and I will receive and slap yeah. from God. So, like, I'm just trying as much as possible to find my feet. Like, as much as I'm in the media space, I'm still staying grounded in Christ because at the end of the day, I know that it has actually put me there for a reason. So there are some things, there are some challenges you will not see me doing. There are some, I'm not saying like I'm now the spirit coco or the only other Dao. We're all just striving to be like Christ at the end of the day. So I'm not perfect, but I'm actually trying in my way to also glorify God yeah. in every single way. Because at the end of the day, like, now God put person for death. So and he knows why. Yeah. So I don't want to get distracted or carried away by the noise. It's so much so noise on yeah, social media. So, so it's uh, actually, I, yeah. And it feels good to still be able to use that my platform for God because at the end of the day, he owns it. So like as much as I'm influencing people to buy clothes, I should be able to influence people to draw closer to god i mean i've seen like a muslim post about i think one of the bible verses i posted one time i should just like ah that i'm a muslim but you see this verse and those are things that make me happy at the yeah. end of the day like if i can in my only two ways still preach the gospel then i will gladly do, do that it.
You're so inspiring and you're doing amazing things Thank and we you. love to watch you and Thank we love you. to see you grow Thank and we you. love that you radiate your vibes and your good energy out and give it to everybody and give it free to the world. And I just sort of, you know, pray that God continues blessing you Amen. and blessing your husband and blessing Tommy Care. Thank, yeah, you, thank you, darling. Thank you so much. Pleasure is all mine.